is the Writer's Almanac for Wednesday. It's the 10th of March, 2021. It's the birthday of the playwright and novelist David Raby, born in Dubuque, Iowa, 1940, drafted and sent off to Vietnam, and wrote a trilogy of plays about Vietnam, The Basic Training of Pablo Hummel, Sticks and Bones, and Streamers. David Raby, who said, I get a sentence, an idea, an image, and I start. I don't know anything beyond it. I follow it. It's the birthday of Henry Fowler, born Tunbridge, England, 1858, who gave us a dictionary of modern English usage, the authority on proper English, and from that comes the phrase, according to Fowler's. He was a schoolmaster, went to live in a stone cottage on the island of Guernsey off the coast of Normandy near his brother Frank, who raised tomatoes. The two brothers collaborated on a book called The King's English, 1906, about grammar and punctuation, which was a big success. So they were commissioned to edit an abridged Oxford English Dictionary. And after Frank died of tuberculosis, Henry wrote his book about style, word usage, and good writing, in which he came down on the side of direct, vigorous style, opposed to the convoluted, the pedantic, and the arcane. Henry Fowler, who said, display of superior knowledge is as great a vulgarity as display of superior wealth. Greater, indeed, inasmuch as knowledge should tend more definitely than wealth towards discretion and good manners. It was on this day, 1948, Zelda Fitzgerald died in the Highland Mental Hospital in Asheville, North Carolina. She'd been locked in a room awaiting electric shock therapy when a fire broke out in the hospital's kitchen. She and eight other women died, and she was buried next to Scott Fitzgerald in the family plot in Rockville, Maryland, under a tombstone with the last line from The Great Gatsby. So we beat on boats against the current, born back ceaselessly into the past. On this day in 1913, Harriet Tubman died, who'd been born to slave parents in Maryland around 1820. She was 15 years old when one day she refused to help an overseer restrain a runaway slave. She was hit in the head with a two-pound weight, left unconscious, suffered from seizures after that, and began to have visions and prophetic dreams, which she viewed as messages from God. She escaped in 1849, made it to Philadelphia, and over 10 years she is believed to have led some 300 slaves into freedom in Canada on the Underground Railroad. There was a price on her head as high as $40,000, but she was never captured, nor were any of the slaves that she led to freedom. Here's a poem for today by William Blake, Nurse's Song. When the voices of children are heard on the green and laughing is heard on the hill, my heart is at rest within my breast and everything else is still. Then come home, my children, the sun has gone down and the dews of night arise. Come, come, leave off play and let us away till the morning appears in the skies. No, no, let us play, for it is yet day and we cannot go to sleep. Besides, in the sky the little birds fly and the hills are all covered with sheep. Well, well, go and play till the light fades away, and then go home to bed. The little ones leaped and shouted and laughed, and all the hills echo and. William Blake, Nurse's Song. That's the Writer's Almanac for Wednesday, March the 10th, funded by donations from listeners like you. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.